Right, oh, good afternoon. You sound much more awake today. I hope this morning was not as draining as yesterday. Okay, great. Today I'm going to do um, four different um, things with you. So hopefully it's not only referencing and you will not find it so boring as the others. We are going to start with a referencing book so that I can just go through the book that you know how to use the source that is physically available on the library's website. Then I'm also going to do um, technical guidelines on how to write an assignment and research for VUT. We've got certain guidelines. And then I want to help you in searching for information if you have your keywords to search because the good news is you will not see my face that long tomorrow. I'm just going to give an hour class. At two o'clock, I'm going to send you to the library and you go for your library orientation. Okay, so tomorrow afternoon is library orientation. And that's unfortunately the only time that they could assist me um, with library orientation and um, then I'm just going to explain a little bit for you how VUT's different um, courses um, look like and so on. All right, so that's for today. Let's pull away and see what we can do today. The referencing guideline in the printed format is this blue book which I showed you yesterday. On the library's website, you go under um, postgraduate research and there you will get the research guidelines. I will also upload this document um, on the Vutella um, site for you. So it starts and having no front page um, and um, it just starts with the introduction and it introduces things that I've already discussed with you yesterday, like the plagiarism and copyright issues. So you all are right with that. And then uh, typing format. Then I come to general rules for textual referencing. And yesterday I did textual referencing um, with you. Um, just one thing that I want to show you with regards to the textual referencing. I had a question about that. Doesn't matter whether it is a textbook or a journal article or the Bible or what source um, in a text for your textual referencing. It's always the surname, the year, and the page. Own, that's the only thing that you write down. If it's the, an organization like the WHO, you write WHO. You will see later today the reference for the Bible. If it's, then you write the Bible and the year that that particular copy of the Bible that you use, um, that year's date you write in there. So, any questions with text, in-text or textual referencing? Are you all all right? No other questions that come up? Right, let's continue. They give you just also an idea of quotations. Again, they say quotations must be kept a minimum. Um, and that is why I say five in your whole project. When the exact words of the original author or source are quoted, it's place them in double quotes. Okay, then there is some cases where you have to put a full stop on the inside of the sentence, like the example there, and that is um, when it is um, a quotation and you use in his book or Swart explains, then the uh, full stop comes before the quotation mark. But if you use the brackets at the end, then you still use the uh, quotation mark at the end of the sentence. All all right with that? 
Okay. If you have a quote, a diary quote, Swart, 1994, explains that the objective of academic library, quote, close quote, but before you close the quote, can you see there's the full stop? Okay. Remember, in our previous examples, yesterday I say, you um, do your um, sentence and you write your bracket and you put the full stop after the bracket. Are you all alright with that? Now today there's one thing, one time where we differ and that is if you write a sentence which starts with swart or it starts with fisser, then and only when it's a double quotation, when it's a quotation, then you put the full stop before the second quote mark. Does that make sense now? Uh -uh. Why not? Why don't you understand? Textual reference always after you close the brackets, the full stop, okay, for your sentence. The only time you don't do it is when you have a quotation because the full stop is with the quotation, okay. And then you don't put the reference at the back, but you put the reference in the front. Can you see an example? The reference is in front, and the full stop is there before the quotation mark. Does that make sense? Okay, let me show you again. The previous one, we have our sentence with the index referencing and the quotation mark is at the end of the bracket. Okay. Do you understand now? Okay. If you don't understand, you have to go and read the book and you can re-look the video while explaining it and we will practice it in class. Okay. We will do a practice on this. Only with quotes. Okay. You put the full stop before you close your quote. Okay. Other times it's at the end of the bracket. All right. Good. Um, then look at this example. Can you see where's the quotation marks? You all see on the board. Can't you see? Is it blurry? Mm. Why does it look like that? Is it because it's a... Wait, 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 wait. I know. Mm, let us look. You can see here is a case where you have a direct quote. Do you see? Then you've got your reference in brackets. The rule stays the same. If the reference is in the brackets at the end of the sentence, the full stop is there at the end. Do you see that? Does that make sense? That's exactly how I teach you yesterday. Okay? Right. Now, there is some cases where you change your sentence and you say, Fisser say, there must be a conclusion for all sentences. If your quotation is at the end of the sentence, the full stop is in the quotation. It's part of the quotation. All right. All right. My solution for this will be, if you do a quotation ever, and you don't know how to apply the rule, what do you do? You put up your hand in the class and you say, ma'am, please come and help me and show me. I don't know where the full stop must come. Okay. So remember, for every rule, there is an exception on a rule. Because otherwise, we will not have a rule. Okay. So, for brackets and full stop, 
we have one exception, and that is when you quote directly. The full stop is before you close your quotation mark. Okay. Oof, it's late in the afternoon. I will come back to this. Um, just want to see if I can. I just make it like this. No, I have to go to. Okay. Let us leave it now there. If you don't know, you've got the book. Come and look in the book. Okay. You can, it's impossible that you will be able to remember everything in the book. What I want to show you today is that there is a book and there are information in the book and you should use it. Okay. Um, look at, maybe this will explain it better. Um, let me go 225%. Can you see in this sentence the full stop is after the bracket? All happy? Can you see in this sentence the full stop is before the um, inverted commas? Okay. In this case, the full stop is again before the inverted <laughs> comma, okay? In this case, we have Swart points out the following. Remember my three dots, no? It is there was something said before, and look where is the full stop, before you close your quote, okay? So it is just in one case, um, in this case, where there is no quote. If you have a quote, the full stop is before you close the quote. The full stop is not after you close the quote. Okay. I hope this example will explain it. If you're not sure, go and look again. Look at if you have first the quote, then the brackets. What does the rule say? After the brackets, the full stop. Look here. After the brackets. Okay. If you have a quote and your sentence ends with a quote, the full stop is before the quote mark. If you're still not sure, refer back to the book. Okay. You will not remember all of it. But I want to show you where to find the information. Right. I have given you a general, um, the general rules of combine, compiling. The VUT booklet is still in bibliography. It's wrong, it should be reference list. So here is the whole list that I've discussed with you um, yesterday. If you come across something that you don't know how to do, please refer to this list, all right? What we have not done yesterday is, if we have more, let me just enlarge this, if you have more than one publication by the same author, we said yesterday we placed the work in chronological order, 2000, 2001, 2003, and, and so forth. Um, but look at this bullet. When more than one work by an author in the same year are used, list them alphabetically by title and distinguish them by adding a lowercase letter after the date. So then you have 1997 A, A, B, and C. So Dix written something 1997 January. No, it is A, the first one, B, the second one, C, the third one. Okay, then you take the title of the journal of the article and you put it in the um, title you put alphabetically. Remember yesterday I said chronological for the dates. Now we cannot put it chronological. So we put them A, B, and C. Which one is A and which one is B? A is the one that starts with 
um, the first letter of the alphabet and C will be the one that is lower down in the alphabet. Does that make sense to you? So you have three articles from Dix in the same year. What are you going to do? Which one which should be first? The one which the article's name, I write an article on students' um, perception on. Then S. No. But now I'm writing an article in the same year on um, alphabetical notions of whatever. Can you hear that's A? So that one, the A one, must come first. And we number it, the year plus a small a. Okay. The second one that I've written is the B one. Okay. Right. Does that make sense? First, it is chronological, the year. But if it's the same person, more than once in a year. The second one, we write it according to the alphabetically of the name of the article. All right. Okay. Mm. The lights are down today. Sure. If you come across something, you know where to find the answer. You don't have to remember it out of your head. Okay. You must know that if I run across any difficulties, I must go and find the answer in this book. All right. Um, the rest I've explained. Yesterday we talked about the Sassel and so on. We also look at abbreviations. The only abbreviations that we are allowed to use um, is and the ampersand and the and um, compiler editor SA stands for no date indicated and it is in Latin. So it is also in Latin. I forgot yesterday it's really Latin. SA, we've got SL, if there is no publication, town or city. And SN, if um, no publisher is indicated in the source. Then our numbering, I showed you that yesterday, for first, second, third, etc. And then if you want to use abbreviation, number, volume, paragraph and column can be used. Okay. All right, let's continue. Um, italics I've explained. Anonymous I've explained. Here you can see it. It's in the book. You can look it up if you forgot how to refer to anonymous. Then artists and artistic works. You are not going to use. We're not using artworks, so whew, we can skip this section. We don't use artifacts. Um, here they just indicate again, and I've explained it yesterday for you, how we work with an author. The author's name can be inside the brackets. The author's name can be outside of the brackets. If you do in the text this or this one, you have your entry in the reference list at the end in this format. Does it make sense? Okay. There you go. Let's go back. Um, if you have two authors, I've explained. My examples are good enough. More than one author. Here it is. You can see it is in italics, the et al, which stands for et ali. Done that yesterday. If the author or editor is unknown, they give you an example. If you have an editor or a translator, an editor or a compiler, here is the example of the Bible. You will use this one only when you are quoting something from the Bible. There you see Bible full stop. And again, the rule is the same. The Bible is the author of the Bible. The year, the name of that particular Bible, you can see this is the King James Version where it was published. 
we have different Bibles, like the Holy Bible, which is published in Cape Town, South Africa. Okay, right. Then they give you the section on books. I've explained to you how to use books, okay. If you have any additional things that you do not know, you can use this book as reference. Um, date of publication is easy. I give it to you yesterday. Title is easy. We've done that yesterday. Um, edition, I just want to stand still here because I think it was not very clear from yesterday's uh, presentation that when you have the second edition, you can see what is the rule? Author, year, name of the book. And when they're done with the name of the book, full stop. Then just before our ring finger, we put in third edition. You see this book is wrong. It should go up there. We didn't. New York, Whaley, that is exactly the same. Okay. So the edition, you just squish in there. Remember what I said? First edition, we never mention. Only second, third, etc. All right. Does this one make sense? Happy? Cool. Um, we have done place of publication yesterday. Remember yesterday I talk about the uh, United States and their abbreviations. So if you don't know what is the abbreviations, this book gives you a list of the abbreviations. There you go. All um, 50 states um, is list here. Right. And if you have difficulties with a publisher and my guide does not give you an answer, in 6.7 there is more information regarding the publisher. I'm not going to read through it. Um, there is number of pages in the book. It is optional, so ignore it. I didn't teach you that, so ignore that one. Great. Um, we can, I've never used things like more than one paragraph um, or um, paragraphs and columns. But what we've used and what I've shown you yesterday is the whole notion of a collected work. And I want to stand still a little bit on a collected work. Your textbook, this one, is a collected work. It got an editor. And each chapter is written by a different person. That's a collected work. So how do we reference a collected work? Please don't try to remember this because you are going to forget. The main thing is, what does the rule say? Author, year, title. Okay, so it is the author of the chapter, the year that the book is written in, the name of the chapter that that person is written, and then you say, where did you find it? This chapter, here is chapter 7, with the author. So you have the author, you have the year, you have the title. Where do we find this chapter? In this book. So, easy. Then you say, in. Quivis Maria, editor. And then you give the name of the book, this book. Okay. So then again you begin all over. So now skip the year, the title. Can you see? And then you write uh, where it's published. You just put instead of the year, it is the editor. Okay. Right. If you forgot it after today, it's fine. You must just know when you want to look it up again. You need to know that this we call a collected work. All right. So it's a chapter in a textbook and we call it a collected work. All right. Unlike journal articles, remember journal articles, which is also inside a bounded book, it's something different. All right. We talk now just about textbooks. All right. Mm. Referencing, Ray, getting difficult now. No. 
especially in the graveyard session. I'm not going to say it again. What I'm going to say to you is, if you get lost, you've got the manual. You just need to know how to use the manual. So for me, it's more important to show you there's a manual, this is how you are using it. So you must remember that then we have that in, in italics, and then we have the textbook name in italics, and then you gave at the end just the page number of that particular chapter. So it starts from page so up to the next page. Okay. Um, if you could um, books as part of a series, um, there are 20 books in a series. I've never come across it, but here is how you should use that. If you've got books which are bring, uh, brought out in volumes, like our encyclopedias, you know the encyclopedias? There's most many of them in the shelves. Okay. Then you come back. There are books in a series of books. Or they have more than one volume. You have to, if you come across it, if you don't know, come and ask. Okay. Go and look and say, tell me, ma'am, I've looked at 6.11. But I still don't understand how to do it. Show me how to do it. Okay. Um, books sometimes is on CD-ROM. You will not use it. Then if you get stuck, yesterday I showed you different browsers, pamphlets, manuals, software programs, etc. Remember, it was all these little booklets. If you don't know how to use it, go to point seven. Um, in the uh, book of referencing. Here is just again um, a chapter in a collected book. Something at conferences, you might um, use that. Know that conference proceedings and corporate offers um, are used differently. There's another one in corporate. Society as an author. Editors, remember editors, I've just shown you, it is the in story. Okay. Data bases, that is not the one that I explained yesterday. This is more in the olden days, so you can ignore the data bases one. CD-ROMs, we don't use. Dictionaries you use. If you use a dictionary, they give you an example of uh, how you use uh, a dictionary, especially when you take a definition from a dictionary. But the definition of a dictionary is a general definition. In our field of um, food service management, food and beverage management, etc., you need to go and find the definitions in your textbook. Okay. We use textbook definitions, not dictionary definition. All right. Because a dictionary definition is something different than a subject related definition. I will do next time the definition of the word research. And I will show you how research uh, is defined in a dictionary and how research is defined in our textbook that we are using. It's two different things. All right. So if you have to define subject terms for your lecturer, you have to define it from out your textbook. You use textbook definitions, not the definition in the dictionary. A dictionary is more to explain what a word means. It is not a academic definition. All right. And we are talking about academic definitions. Multi-volume sets, you can skip. CD-ROMs, you can skip. Electronic information sources, I've talked about it. If you get stuck, come and have a look at these. Um, we get today um, books, no longer printed format. You can Google. In Google Scholar, you will find books. And if you find the book in Google, Google Scholar, this is a way it should be referenced. All right. I'm not going to go through it. The rule remains the same. 
You have to have the author, you have to have the year, you have to have the title, and then there is a few things that happen. Okay, and you have to go and look for these few things. Don't try to learn it out of your head. It's impossible, okay. Um, I'm working now for more than, yeah, well, it's certainly 15, 20 years worth referencing. I know them by heart, but you really, it's long, long years of experience to get them. Um, by art. So don't worry too much about them. Um, they have individual contributions. That one you can skip. There is something, and I've explained yesterday for you, in journal articles. Remember I told you yesterday about the PDF version and the HTLM version. No. If you have the HTLM version and you cannot lay your hands on the PDF version, you should use this long, long way to um, write it. So don't go the HTLM um, route, all right? Because then you have to write all of this out. I'm going to make it, a I'm going to enlarge it a little bit. The rule remain the same. Surname for the thumb. The name of the article, the name of the, you see the name of the article, redeeming clinical trials, whatever, blah, blah, blah. In which journal, modern drug discovery, where did you find it? Online, on a website, full stop. Again, you must put the volume, the number, and the pages, as well as it's available at and you must write out that whole HTTP double colons backslash backslash pub.acs.org slash. Oh, how long is it going to take you to type this? Yes. yes. Yeah. So don't go the HTML route. Okay. Um, you have to add it is accessed and the date that you've downloaded. You must make a printout. If I'm calling you back, I say, I want to see your print out of this article. And I want to see what's the date here. Okay, you print out. So, print it out or save it on a stick. All right. But you must keep copies of your articles. You will see when we are going to do critical reading, you have to start reading this thing. You cannot just highlight and copy something from here. You have to read it. So you must... Have your things safe on your stick. And I still prefer to print it out. Take a ruler and a pencil and underline um, the important things that I want to use from out the article. But that's for the next lecture. So, if you find a journal article that is not published in a hard copy, you can't get it, you can only get it in the HTML format. You have to go to page 20 in this book. So I will just say to you, go and look on page 20. And then you must know where to go and look for it. Newspapers, you, if you have a newspaper article, then here is the way to reference newspapers. Again, the rule is the same. And then we have to add on that online rule. Look here, it's now not WS there because it's not on a website. And then the date of the um, newspaper, also available at, and you must write that whole story down, and also the date accessed. Okay, All right. So, um, normally my other students in PR, I stand still more here, because this is important for them. They are using a lot of news articles and news clippings. If you use something on a home page, here is it how you reference a home page. News groups. If somebody is sending you an email, how are we going to reference an email? So you get the sender. And you can see here, you, again, it's the name. But now, the name plus the person's email address. You hear again the n name of this email and then to whom it was mailed to you or to somebody else 
that person's email address and the date it was done. Okay. So again, the rule is kind of fun for the author. Then we have to add the email address, put in the year, we put in the title, then we put in the person to whom it was sent, again, that person's name and their email address and the date on which it was sent. Okay. Questions on an email. So if somebody is sending you an email and you want to quote something from that email, that is the way that you should reference an email. Okay. You will find the emails on um, page 21. Personal email messages, you can look, CD-ROMs, we can skip. Discussion groups, I've never come across. Electronic journals, if it's say information research and electronic journal, you do not have the information, as I explained yesterday for you, you have to do it according to this rule on page 21. So I'm just going to write there for your page 21. Then you know, need to know, I have to go and look in this reference book on page 21 or 22 or wherever. Okay. Right. The internet, um, same, the rule, just the offer, the year, the title, online, available at all internet address into um, these bigger and smaller um, signs and then the date accessed. But you will not know it. You have to look it up. If you are going to use a government gazette, then there's another rule for it. I'm not going to explain it. If you've got a government gazette, go and look it up, try it, come and show me, and then I will assist you. Provincials, prov uh, provinces also got gazettes. Then we've got government publications, like the Constitution of South Africa, the Republic of South Africa, and this is how you um, reference a constitution. If there's commission, uh, commissions of inquiry, we don't often do that, so you can skip this one. Councils, Commission on Higher Education, Reserve Bank, we don't use. Different departments we sometimes use, like the Department of Agriculture, so you can look at the departments in here. I don't know if you've ever heard of the Hansard. Uh, we are not using it uh, in our subject field that often. Here's another one on provinces, on the Hansard of the province. And then we have the last one, which is internal documents. So, if you want to reference like your learner guide, you quote something from your learner guide or from notes that the lecturer has given you, then you should use this one. And again, the rule is the same. It belongs to VUT or the lecturer, the year that it was written in, what the name was, and the, you can say it's an internal document. So it means it's not a published document. Right. I'm not going to stand still with all the other technical things. It is just too many to grasp in uh, one day. Journal articles I've done in detail with you. All the issues there. The volume the year done yesterday. Um, if you have one without a volume and a number, um, you can also look here. We are not using laws because we're not in the law department. Letters and interviews, we see not that often. Um, interviews per telephone or face-to-face -face interviews, there's also a way how to reference that. Again, the basic first three things remain the same, and then you say which place and how did you record it. Today, we will not do a cassette recording, you will somehow do a cell phone um, recording. No. Okay if you record somebody. This is how you reference that, if you have a record on your phone. If you are coming and do your masters, we are checking this and then you have to keep a copy um, of that. And remember, the 
rule for keeping information is five years. That is legislation in South Africa. You have to keep information for five years um, so that one can refer back to it. After five years, you can throw it away or put it in long-term uh, um, storage. Then letters, micro-material we don't use, newspaper, articles in report, there's another one. If we have a green paper, have you heard about the green papers and the white papers of government? If you haven't, no things like that. Um, we have the white paper on higher education, the green paper on higher education, so forth. But you are fortunately not in education, so we don't use that. Patents we are not using. Photocopies, even photocopies should be referenced. Um, again, the rules are the same. Only here you put in brackets that it's a photostat copy from wherever you found the photocopy. Um, sometimes we hear something on the radio or the television. How do we reference that? We hear it on Mnet, which year, which program. We put in brackets which TV program and the date of it. So it's also not that difficult. If you want to quote something from uh, the recordings and the videos and the lectures that I'm giving, then again, um, there is a way to reference that as well. Also, the same basic rules apply. Then, you need to be awake for this one. We've, you get something called a primary source and something that is a secondary source. Now, what would you think would the primary source be? Anyone wants to try what's a primary source? A primary source is the original first source. So if I'm writing something in my own words that I've discovered and I quote from nobody and I copy it from no book, I'm the primary source. All right? Does that make sense to you? If you copy it from me, you write a secondary source. So what happens? I'm cop you copy from me, she copy from you, you copy from her, you copy from her. So I want to know, if I'm going to stand over here and I'm going to say something in her ear and I ask her to pass it on and each of you pass this story or this word that I say in her ear, pass it on. The last student with a nice yellow shirt, what will you hear? <laughs> Something totally different. In the time that I have lots of times to lecture this, I did it in the class, and I say a simple word like Nelson Mandela. You really don't want to know what's come out at the back. You are scared to death. So, <laughs> <laughs> this poor last person is always red face in my class, so I don't want to do it to you, because it's so skewed misinformation. So, the rule in the research is you need to go back to the original source. Don't copy who copied from somebody who copied from someone and who copied from a next person. All right. So, there are ways that you can reference it, but we are use it very in very limited cases. But if you think of a guy like um, Einstein of Isaac Newton, do you know Isaac Newton? Hmm. Drop the apple from the tree, no. Nah. Uh, gravity, maths, um, science. Long time ago. We all hate that subject. Hmm, yeah. So, his original works are very difficult to find. So, it's been quoted and quoted. So, those we use as secondary 
sources. But Maslow, do you know Maslow? Who knows Maslow? What did Maslow do? You've got the idea of needs, no? Yeah. So people's needs, he's the father of the psychology of what we need. And his work is easily obtainable, but all your textbooks have it, no? So it's a copy from a copy from a copy. Go back to the original source. Ah. It was also a few years back, so your textbook will be fine to use. Okay. So, but if you see somebody have already quoted it, and you see this in brackets, go to the back in the reference list, go and fetch that original article, and quote and rewrite it yourself. Because if you rewrite something in your own words, you say it differently that, that the original person might mean it. So we must be careful not to quote and requote. I will talk more about it later in the year, and I will also refresh your mind at the end of the year um, on this issue. But normally, you will say, Butterf uh, Butterfield, as quoted by Johnson and Medinus, this ant is wrong, eh? Because it must be the ampersand one, it's in the brackets. Or the beer, as cited by Swart, defines something. Or the beer, as quoted by Swart. Do not use it, okay? My, it's just one more difficult one that you need to know. Go back to the original sources. Um, that is if the original source is unobtainable. If you want to quote a study guide, here is the reference. Um, no author, then we use, remember I told you we use the institution as an author, and look that the institution, like uh, Potchestrum for Higher Education, or the University of South Africa, is in capital letters, but if you have it as an abbreviation in the previous one, you have to write out the whole word. So, for us, if you use the WHO in brackets, World Health Organization, close the brackets. That's how you use that offer. Okay. If you forgot it, page 34. You can get it again there. Furthermore, the rules remain the same. The year, the name, and then where is it published, and if it has some numbers, and so on. So you get the idea of referencing. Okay. Um, Translations we rarely use, translator we rarely use. Sometimes students are copying for um, physicists, dissertations, and mini dissertations. Hmm. While I'm on this topic, I might somewhat explain to you what is the difference. When you are doing a doctorate or a DTEC, you are writing a thesis. When you are doing your master's degree or an MTech degree, you are writing a dissertation. If you come back next year, we are going to write a mini dissertation. All right. So on postgraduate and honors level, we are writing mini dissertations. Masters write dissertations and doctoral students write thesis. Okay, questions? Interesting one, that. They just show you the, if you have used thesis or dissertations, there is how it should be done. If you use videos where we've got often our YouTube videos, whatever, I'm not going to stand still. Rule is again the same. And then they give you a list of um, a reference list, an example. But use the one as I explained to you um, and write it because unfortunately they are in the process of updating this manual, but this manual contains a lot of uh, mistakes um, still in it. All right, and that brings us to the end of referencing. So is there any questions on